This is Sam Katz with Gallery Glass, and I'm at the studio space of Jennifer Delilah. Jennifer, why don't you show me your beautiful studio space? I will. So this is where I work, um, and I have a, an abundance of paintings here that I kind of took on reserve for shows at the last minute. Let's start with these. Can you tell me about your process and inspiration? Well, the process is essentially an old master's technique. I started at the Versailles, which is a black and white window painting, and then did the colors on top. These are oil and Belgian linen. And they're on a theme of freedom and perceived confinement. You said um, metaphors often um, show themselves in your work. Is that right? Yes, definitely. My work is all highly metaphorical. It's a narrative that's um, using animals and half animal, half human creatures to get across a, an idea of the, the kind of tension between our intellectual and animal selves. And I've read all about this piece, and I understand it's drummed up some major controversy. Can you tell me about it? say it's drummed up concert controversy people even like stockbrokers look at it and they and they appreciate it and aren't offended by it somehow even though I'm kind of poking fun at them and their whole their whole method of modus operandi and in, in the financial world I've had a couple of offers from stockbrokers to buy this painting what is the name the New York Pock Exchange and how long did it take you to pe create this piece that piece took about a year and of course, the, the animals come into play again. And is this work right here still in process? Yeah, or this, is, this is the very early stage of it. This is like the very first sort of sketchy layer. And then I start putting in more detail with the, with the Versailles as I go along. This one is much more advanced than this. It's incredibly detailed. What is the um, medium? Is it charcoal? Pencil paint? It's oil paint on panel. So Versailles often shows up in your work um, and, and French culture. Is that for a particular reason? Did you spend any time living there? What's the backstory behind the, the theme of Versailles? Well, I have been to Versailles. I never lived there, um, being American. <laughs> uh, I don't even speak French. Hmm? very well. But um, it's when I was trying to come up with a with a setting for these sort of grand narratives where I'm talking about colonialism and imperialism. Uh, I was really talking about the United States and, you know, primarily what's going on now. But I didn't want to set it in the United States because one, it wouldn't have been as beautiful um, and seductive. And I really wanted people to want to look at it. And two, I'm not sure that's it. <laughs> so while speaking of, you have a really large scale work over here I'd like to look at. And maybe you can walk me through the, the meaning and the theme behind this one. Well, when I started working with the interiors of Versailles, um, the beehive as the, the foundation of the walls, that theme I developed because of the way that we live. If you look out my window, it's the, it's the, it's, it's just the honeycomb. It's like people are doing their thing in there. They're kind of buzzing around in their little, in their little beehive. So you wanted to carry that theme through? Yeah, I wanted to, yeah. So I started using this beehive idea of people um, amassing sustenance and wealth in this kind of self-created, reality. Um, and then once I had gotten to the point with that theme where I felt that the, the narrative was clear, I started thinking about what would be outside of a palace that was made out of beehives, which is you know, made out of honeycomb. And I, I thought, well, there'd probably be, be a, an abundance of birds out there. And so I started to develop with, with my liminal characters 
these, these sort of economies of the half bird, half person characters and what kind of things would they do? And I thought maybe there's a, maybe there's a, a class of birds that are sort of the overlord class and they are basically uh, dominant over the more beautiful exotic birds, which I feel that in some sense that's, that's what human society is like. You know, it's like people, people take advantage of each other in these bizarre ways. And so I started working with this theme of the, the beautiful peacock being pursued by a stork and then having its feathers plucked out and made into a mask. Oh, wow. whole haircut thing is sort of plucking and taking advantage of other creatures on the earth as a victim. Yes, you really you really have to look very closely to sort of see the sort of complexities and in, in these relationships that you've developed here. It's really quite fascinating. I also want to look back over here real quickly at some of the smaller work, but I understand there's great detail and story behind these two pieces. Maybe you can tell me more about it. Well, in the, in the palace interiors that I developed, there's a, there's a prince, and he's based on the last recognized Dauphin of France, Louis the 19th. And he, in my narrative, is this little tyrannical despot who has his own make-believe world. There's a there's a game. There's a floor that's like a game, um, with the with the map of the world, and he plays with his little tin soldiers and his little guns, and has no real grounding in regard for the consequences of that sort of behavior because he was a child. Which I think that, on some level, when when societies grow to these massive uh, governments where, you know, everything is very abstract because people are working on these little little bits of it, little microcosms of developing, you know, uh, an economy. They kind of lose sight of the big picture. So he was, he was my metaphorical government, head of government, you know. So in my narrative, he just gets more and more kind of out of control. And eventually, the palace is taken over by the servants and by nature. So I also wanted to ask you really quickly, I think our viewers would be interested to know about the device that you're wearing, same as mine. Um, you are an, another uh, Google Glass Explorer. And how did you become a Google Glass Explorer? Well, they put out a, a sort of a a media blast about the possibility of acquiring this device. And, you know, they said, basically, you know, tell us what you would do with it. And so I thought, wow, I could use it to document my work. I could use it to replace all of the source imagery photos that I use, possibly, um, because I make a lot of prints in order to make my paintings. And so, you know, I kind of wanted to reduce my pile of paper and have it more organized so that I could have that, that kind of uh, information at my fingertips. And so I've been, I've been experimenting with it. Um, have you found it a useful tool in your process? You know, it's, it's getting there. I mean, it's, right now it's very beta. Like the, the reason that I think that they, they presented it um, to a limited group of people was so that they could get feedback on what people actually needed to do and they could make improvements and people would start creating apps and things like that. And if it would, if they would make an app that does time lapse, I would be, I would be so happy. You know, I would really like to make a, a time lapse video of a painting from beginning to completion. I think that would be really cool. Yes, I think with all of the advancements that artists and, and creatives have suggested, it will really get to a place that people will find it a hugely beneficial tool in their process. I think so too. I think it has a lot of promise. All right. This is Sam Katz with Gallery Glass. Thank you. Now give us a kiss.